All right, everybody, we're back with our Cabral House Calls every single weekend, answering our community's questions, some of my favorite shows of the whole week. Of course, I love being able to do a deep dive each and every day on the Cabral concept. But honestly, the whole reason for the show and the deep dives Monday through Friday is really to be able to help people answer their questions about their overall health, body transformation, aging, longevity, chronic disease, and so much more. And on the weekends, this is where we get into the nitty gritty and we actually look at what is ailing you. And not only that, what are the underlying root causes that when addressed, allow you to fully heal? And that means not just one part of your body. One part of the body doesn't get well. The whole body gets well. That's really what holistic or integrative health is all about. So uh, every weekend getting to about 10 of the questions, about you know five on Saturday, five on Sunday. Love being able to do it. If you want to follow along with today's show, head on over to stephencabral.com slash 3214. All right, let's dive in. First question is from Anonymous. Anonymous says, hello, I've tested my hormones, but I didn't know it should be done by a saliva test. I'm wondering if I can still make something out of the results of the female hormones I tested in this way, or are the results completely off? They've tested FSH, LH, prolactin, estradiol, progesterone, testosterone, and DHEA, TSH, and cortisol. I understand it's not the same as with the saliva test, but hopefully it still means something. What should I look into? To understand the levels. I know Equal Life offers these tests, but you don't chip here, unfortunately. Thank you for all your help. Yeah, happy to help. So maybe you're in New York or maybe you are in Europe. Those are the only places basically that we can't ship uh, quite yet. New York, it's not legal. Um, and uh, Europe, you know, we're working on it, but it's just country codes and in, in shipping and all that jazz. But we're, we're working on it. We definitely ship to Canada, the UK, Australia, New Zealand, and then of course all over the US, except for New York, which doesn't allow it. So, um, but yes, so blood is certainly valid for hormones. I'm not saying that it's not, um, but we need to look at it in a very specific way. It's basically, what are you looking for? So cortisol, you're not going to be able to get throughout the day and you're not going to be able to get it upon waking because you can't go for a blood draw like right when you wake up at six in the morning. It would have to be literally like within 30 minutes of waking that. So you look at the cortisol waking response, but I won't get too crazy into that. So I've got a lot of case studies on exactly how to read it. Even like you can still look at my free case studies and those are at stephencabral.com slash podcasts. On the right-hand column, just click on case studies and then look for the hormones and you'll be able to figure out exactly how to read that lab. So this is something I also uh, will be teaching in IHP level three is the fertility test because you're running FSH and LH and prolactin. And typically we would run those for women we're trying to help and work with in order for them to conceive uh, or we're looking at it in terms of menopause as well because those levels change in menopause. And that's how we officially know as well, besides obviously um, the cessation of a menstrual cycle for 12 months. So uh, all of that is there. It's all in the case studies. It's all in depth. And yes, you can absolutely use blood. So I'm not saying that you can't. What I am saying is that saliva gives you the free levels, so free testosterone, which is really important to look at. And it's going to give you the best indicator. It's also going to look at estrogen and progesterone. And it doesn't help to run estrogen and progesterone at any time during the month because you want to know why. So if you're having hormonal issues, you want to run your estrogen and progesterone around days 19, 20, or 21, whenever you might be feeling symptoms maybe of estrogen dominance, if you are, which is more of the water retention, maybe bloating, maybe irritability, low mood, poor sleep, digestive issues. If you're feeling that about seven days to 10 days before your menstrual cycle, that's when you run that stress mood and metabolism test. So for anybody who's never run it and they would like to for both men and women, I can't recommend it enough. It looks at your entire metabolism, all your hormones, and you can find that at stephencabral.com slash hormones dash test, or just everything is at stephencabral.com slash shop. And that takes you over to Equal Life. All right. All right. Let's get to our next question. Michael. Michael says, what are your suggestions for cooking utensils for cooking or for ki kitchen utensils for cooking? That's my fault. Uh, thanks for all you do. Happy to help, Michael. So we use in our, our home, all of my resources, by the way, are at stephencabral.com slash resources. These are really resources that I use every day uh, with my family and in my private practice. So for our kitchen, that's one of the biggest ones. And we use stainless steel pans, no aluminum, or cast iron, or glass. I mean, that's 
basically everything we do. We actually have some, my wife uses some ceramic. I'm saying like we, like I cook all the time. My wife does an amazing job uh, at cooking dinner for our family. I don't cook very often. I used to cook. I used to enjoy that, but my wife is far better at it than I. Um, so that's that. And then what do we use for utensils? So like if we're talking spatulas, things like that, we do have stainless steel, but really we have um, like a wood bamboo spoon for things like rice. Uh, what else do we have? We have silicone based spatulas, so, uh, the stainless steel, as I said before, but you don't want to scrape that against an aluminum pan, uh, bamboo, s- silicone, and yeah, a stainless steel. So that's, that's basically everything. And again, all those resources, all of them, literally, and I don't own any of these companies, they're all at stephencabral.com slash resources for those. All right, next up is Adrian. Adrian says, my health has been deteriorating since July when my neurosurgeon for nerve damage in my C5 and C6 along with two fractures in my C2 and C3. I think I think you had surgery, it's basically saying, and I know what the, so the cervical vertebrae are the ones you have your skull and then you have your cervical vertebrae. And then as you basically hit your shoulder blades, uh, the little Boston accent right there, uh, you have your thoracic vertebrae. So above that, basically the neck or the cervical vertebrae. And it goes from one down to where you're talking about C2, C3 and C5, C6. Okay. So now you say I get fatigued quickly, having seizures due to my blood pressure skyrocketing. And then I have extreme pain and numbness in my right side. My doctor really wanted me to get tested for MS. Can someone have MS without lesions? All right, we've got a lot to unpack here, even though it's only a couple sentences. So I don't know if it says you had surgery. It says when my neurosurgeon for nerve damage, I think you had surgery. And I want to share that if you had surgery, And then all of a sudden now you have the fatigue and you're having seizures, et cetera. We want to make sure that there was no nerve impingement, that nothing actually got damaged, that, you know, there isn't any actual nervage damage there because that could absolutely affect seizures and blood pressure, et cetera. So always keep in mind, the underlying root cause is yes, oftentimes deficiencies and toxicities. It's some of each. But sometimes, not off, not as often, right? But sometimes it is biomechanical. So let me give you an example. Um, I've, I had a ton of shoulder pain in a, around uh, 2020, 2021. And I, because I tore the labrum of my shoulder. And basically that's, think of it as like, almost like sticky, like a sticky pad that keeps the humerus the bone in the upper arm into the glenerol humeral joint, the bone of the, the shoulder socket, right? And that tore away about 60% of it. So I had a lot of pain. Now, the root cause for that is not a deficiency or toxicity. The root cause of my shoulder pain was I was injured. I literally got injured. Now, I decided not to have surgery. I decided to do everything I could to see if I didn't have to have surgery. And I said, all right, in six months to a year from now, if I'm still in this type of pain and I can't put on a shirt like normal, I can't do push-ups, uh, anything like that, or pull-ups, which I couldn't do, then okay, then I'm going to consider surgery because it needs to be fixed. Luckily for me, I got no real benefit out of physical therapy, but I got tremendous benefit out of different physical therapy exercises from two great chiropractors that I worked with where we specifically looked at every possibility. And although I knew the exercises, I couldn't really get into it without their help. And the reason is, is that they were experts at the guidance of what to do when, when to progress. But I was so locked up in my shoulder that they were able to get in there with uh, what's called the Graston technique, also called gua sha back in the day in, in traditional Chinese medicine, to break up a lot of the tissue to allow a more normal range of motion that it could then get stronger. And so kind of a long story short, sometimes the root cause is an injury. And this injury may have happened from the surgery. And you want to talk to your surgeon, they'll sometimes deny it, right? But if there's a possibility of impingement, looking at that and then working on that. So uh, and then if, and then again, if you're saying, no, I don't think it's that please run the big five 
to look at all your deficiencies and toxicities. Those are the big five at-home lab tests that will look at vitamins and minerals and omegas, anti-inflammatories, all these great things, uh, food sensitivities, et cetera. And it will look at toxicities like heavy metals as well. So that's at stephencabal.com. I'm just going to say shop slash shop, stephencabal.com slash shop. That'll take you over for all the labs, all the protocols, et cetera. All right. Larissa is up next. Can you recommend a probiotic for my two and a half year old son? Due to unfortunate circumstances, he was born via C-section and formula fed. He has little bumps on the back of his arm that I suspected on my understanding of Chinese skin mapping is due to small intestinal issues. I heard the gut microbiome solidifies after three years old, aside from organic unprocessed foods, want to help give him the best gut microbiome given the circumstances. Thanks in advance for all you do for our growing enlightened community. Happy to help here. So lots of podcasts on this as well. Um, it is called all sorts of things on the back of the arm, but those are often from food sensitivities, uh, which are often in children, sensitivities to cow milk, sensitivities to soy, sensitivity to gluten, sensitivity to eggs. That's where I see it the most common. Sometimes certain nuts, things like that, but usually a lot of parents aren't giving their you know young kids nuts. Um, but those are the main ones that I see. So uh, we, after three years old, we can do a food sensitivity test. That's certainly a possibility. You can do it right at home. Uh, but for now, sometimes parents just do an elimination diet of essentially dairy, gluten, and eggs. And they can get great results when their kids have eczema or cradle cap or... Yeah, all sorts of issues. So it might be, might be worth testing for 21 days. Okay. Now, probiotic uh, is the, you can do two things. So when we work with someone in our practice and they suspect some type of gut issue, we'll do one to two bottles, one to two months of clean gut probiotic. And then we switch to the daily probiotic support. So again, I can't give any medical advice, medical treatment plans, medical cures, medical diagnosis, but for a child this age, uh, I can just tell you exactly what we did with my daughter. So we did it. She was much younger. We used the Klinga probiotic, one capsule a day. So one bottle last two months. So we just did that for one uh, to two months. And then we switched to the daily probiotic support. Now, when she was very, very young, though, she wasn't born C-section or anything like that, but she did have a couple um, digestive issues. And we used along with that B Infantis and l ruteri Now, l ruteri is already in the daily probiotic support. So most people just go with the daily probiotic support for a young child under a year old and there's digestive issues. We often then add B. infantis as well. All right. And that's just a strain. Hopefully that is helpful. And how do you do it? You could just add it in water, uh, just a little bit of water. You can just mix it up in that. Totally fine. You can mix it up in the food and there's no issues with that as well. So hopefully, uh, hopefully that is helpful. All right, let's get to one more question today. It's from Lauren. Lauren says, hi, Dr. Brawl. I had a fall while hiking. Nothing serious. Landed on my hands and had trauma to my right index finger. Noticeable swelling. Thought it might be dislocated. Doctor suggested an x-ray, which confirmed no dislocation, but avoid, but avoid calcification adjacent to the uh, pip joint suggestive of calcif calcific periarthritis. Generally, I follow an anti-inflammatory lifestyle, but notice prior, no more alcohol or holidays, more flex meals. The same finger has had joint pain and swelling, far less in the fall, but noticeable. I'm concerned it's not getting better and wonder about complications with moving arthritis for going forward. Would surgery be an option to remove it or what can I do? Pain on touch, bend properly, and certain things seem to trigger it. Any specific Supplements for calcium resorption. Yeah, happy to help. So uh, we want to have the right amount of vitamin D, not too much. We want to have magnesium uh, is another big one. Uh, we'll use vitamin K2 with that. So vitamin D3, K2, magnesium. Um, I would use a product called Inflamasooth, three capsules to six capsules a day. Uh, in the short term, you can do three and three, morning and night. And then after one month, you could move down to three capsules per day of the Inflamasooth. So these are initial recommendations. And then I definitely recommend uh, proteolytic enzymes. Two upon waking uh, would, be, would be fantastic. So I had the same thing happen to me, unfortunately. I, again, I haven't like had that many injuries in my life, but I've had enough. And one was just like, it's just always been random. I fell when doing, um, you know, just something silly, of course. And I fell and hit the concrete and I very much uh, injured my wrist. So my ulna. 
and that's one of the bones in your wrist. And I fractured it, hairline fracture. It was swollen for months. So that kind of calcif uh, calcific periarthritis, and it, you know, progressively better. I kind of taped it in place and still did my exercises, but it had to be neutral grip for a lot of things. I won't go into a long story. Here's what ultimately worked for me. All of those things worked, and then I did a 14-day uh, fast. Now, it wasn't a water fast the whole time, but I did some water fasting, and then I moved into basically the functional medicine detox. And that, again, I'm not giving anyone else any medical advice, medical treatment plans, medical cures, medical diagnosis, cured it for me. It never came back, ever came back. My wrist, no longer swollen. It's unbelievable. And it wasn't even on my mind because during my fast, I was hungry. Uh, so the last thing in my mind was the pain in my wrist and the, the little bit of swelling, but it's phenomenal. I mean, again, your body knows how to heal. And so if you're able to, then maybe it's something worth looking into. All right, everybody, hopefully this has been helpful. I'll be back tomorrow answering more of our community's questions. Take care, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.